Today you're going to learn how to select the best power source for your hardware, new hardware product. We're going to look at three options. The first is to use a rechargeable battery. The second option is to use replaceable batteries. And the third option is to power it directly from an AC electrical outlet. So let's start by looking at rechargeable batteries. Uh, the first thing you have to answer is what type of rechargeable battery do you want to use? There are a variety of types of rechargeable batteries, but for consumer electronic products, typically it comes down to either lithium ion or lithium polymer. These two types of batteries are, are fundamentally very similar. The, the key difference is that a lithium polymer has a little more flexibility in the shape of the battery and they can be made thinner. Um, so for really thin, small products where you, you maybe need a really odd-shaped battery to be able to uh, efficiently use all the available space in your product, then a lithium polymer is going to be a better choice. Lithium ion batteries are, are more of a, a rigid battery. Think of the, the battery pack in a laptop computer. If you happen to take that battery pack out and you open it up inside, you would find uh, multiple lithium ion cells that look slightly like they look like a double a battery but just a little bit bigger but there it's a very rigid type of uh, battery but the advantage of lithium ion is they, they uh, tend to be a little bit cheaper maybe 10 to 20 percent cheaper than a lithium polymer so if you don't need the uh, the, the advantages of the lithium polymer that the, the you know the thinner size and the more flexibility in the shape then probably go with a lithium ion lithium polymer is what I typically use for most of the products that I work with the downside of a rechargeable battery versus a replaceable battery is you have extra uh, cost to your product uh, this is especially true with the battery itself um, you know, lithium uh, rechargeable batteries cost a few dollars, uh, depending on the capacity. So that's going to add to your product's cost. You also have to have a, a special circuit in there to charge the battery. And you need another circuit to actually monitor the battery level of the battery for lithium uh, rechargeable batteries. So all this adds additional cost and some additional design complexity. It's not tremendous, uh, you know, I, most products I think benefit with a rechargeable battery, but this is, you know, just a, one of the disadvantages compared to rechargeable batteries. So if you're trying to save every penny on your product and it's a really low cost product, then you may want to be better off uh, going with replaceable or disposable batteries. Also, rechargeable batteries, lithium batteries, uh, they have some safety issues, so they also require... Uh, additional certifications. Um, I, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that in this video, but be sure to read the article for more details on certifications that you'll need for, uh, for a, a lithium uh, rechargeable battery. So the next uh, thing we're going to look at is how do you recharge the rechargeable batteries. So now you have to find another power source uh, to use to recharge the rechargeable battery. The easiest, um, most straightforward option is to use an external AC-DC power adapter. Uh, you know, this is the thing that plugs into your uh, AC electrical outlet and will output 5 or 12 volts DC. Um, if, you, uh, if you do go this route, be sure it's a pre-certified adapter that has already been UL certified. Then that way you won't have to have your product UL certified because your product won't be what plugs directly into the AC electrical outlet. It will be the adapter uh, that you'll be sourcing uh, from a from a third party. The other option is to use a, a USB port. Um, this is you know very similar to the the first one, the external AC DC power adapter, because you can use a, a USB uh, charger you know that just pl plugs into electrical outlet. It's basically just an AC-DC uh, converter. It's just standardized. So obviously you have a standard USB connector with the standard pinout and the, always the 5 volts DC. And then you have uh, different current uh, uh, ratings. So for like a USB that's on a laptop, um, which is a called a standard downstream port or SDP, the most you can pull is 500 milliamps. But for a dedicated charging port, which is a, a you know a wall adapter that you plug in, that's a you know a USB adapter you plug into the wall, that can output one and a half amps of current. 
These current ratings are for USB 1.0 and 2.0. They increase a little bit uh, for USB 3.0. The other option is you can use a solar panel. Downsides of the solar panel is they, they need to be pretty large to generate significant current. So either it's you need a large product or you're gonna add some additional size to your product for the solar panel, or you're just gonna have to accept that it's gonna be a really slow trickle charge. The other option is wireless induction charging. This is where you, you can take your device, lay it down on like a, a charging mat with no wires connected, and uh, inductively it will charge. There's a coil in the, in the mat, and there's a coil in your product, and electromagnetic energy is transferred between those coils wirelessly charging your product. It, it's, it's a really cool technology, but it has some... Uh, some issues that can cause complications with it. So unless this is a fundamental feature of your product, I recommend sticking with a more standard uh, charging method such as USB, at least initially. Um, if, if you feel wireless charging is a key specification for your product, then you know, by all means, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a technology that you can implement. And then there are other alternatives, uh, radio frequency, power harvesting, uh, motion, you know, you shake it to, to recharge it, and then some more R&D, uh, like chemical power harvesting, trying to, you know, collect energy off a, a person's skin, for instance. Uh, but those are just, uh, you know, R&D and only uh, useful in very limited applications. So now we're going to look at replaceable batteries. You have, you know, essentially two choices that we're going to look at. You have alkaline, which we're all familiar with, you know, the 9-volt, AA, AAA batteries. And then we have lithium, or more specifically, lithium metal batteries. So these are disposable lithium batteries. These are not rechargeable. So it's a, it's a you know, they're considerably different than a lithium ion or a lithium polymer. Typically, you'll just see them referred to as lithium batteries, but technically it's lithium metal uh, batteries and most of the time you know you can buy lithium metal batteries in you know the, all the standard sizes 9 volt double AA, a triple a but most commonly they're uh, they come in a coin cell like watch size batteries one negative of using uh, disposable batteries that a lot of people don't really think about is the fact that you're going to need a battery access door obviously your user is going to need to be able to access the batteries to change them and that's going to require that you add a door to your product that they can access the batteries through. That sounds simple enough, and in a lot of ways it is, but the, 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 the key complication is that the battery access door is, a, is another piece of custom-shaped plastic that you require. And what, uh, what you need to realize is that one of the most expensive um, aspects of scaling a product from prototype to full manufacturing is the, the cost of high pressure injection molds. Um, so if you can, uh, you know, you always want to work to reduce the number of custom plastic pieces that you need. So one way around the battery access door issue is to find a, uh, you know, a manufacturer, for in instance, on Alibaba.com that makes a product that uh, requires, you know, a similar size uh, replaceable battery that has a door that you like, um, you know, that seems uh, pretty close to what you're wanting, uh, you know, strike a deal with them that you can purchase the door directly from them. But then once you, you have all the, the measurements and, and uh, specifications for this uh, door, you can design your enclosure around that door. So then that way you don't need a, a, an extra uh, expensive mold for the, just the battery door. And finally, the power in your product directly from AC power. The key thing to remember is this is uh, if you're going to, anytime your product connects directly into AC power, you're going to require expensive UL certification. So you're looking at uh, roughly about ten dollars to $12,000. Uh, AC power also has the potential to cause uh, serious injury. So there are safety issues that you're going to uh, be responsible for. So you're going to have to make sure that your, your product is uh, safe and obviously doesn't uh, uh, cause any type of injury. Um, if you're gonna, if your 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 product, which are most products, 
if your product ultimately is using DC power and not AC, so you're taking the AC, converting it to DC, typically it's not, I, I don't advise doing that inside your product because that conversion process requires some fairly large heavy components that are gonna add to the size and weight of your product. It's usually better to use an external AC-DC converter um, like I've discussed before, if your product uses uh, DC power. I had discussed this before as a way to recharge a battery, but you can also just have an external AC-DC converter that always supplies your, your product. So if the power goes out, your product just shuts down and there, there is uh, no battery. If, if your product is actually using AC directly, you know, has an AC motor or an AC heater or uh, something like that, then you're, you're not going to be able to get around that. And you're going to have to require UL certification. Okay, so that's everything we're going to discuss today. This video was just a quick highlight of the various topics that I discuss in detail in the blog. So be sure to read the full article for all the details. I hope you found this video useful. I'm John Teal with Predictable Designs, and thanks for listening.